Hello, I'm Mort Kern. I'm the Associate Chief of Cardiology here at the University of California, Irvine, here in Orange, California. I'm also the Chief of Cardiology at the Long Beach Veterans Administration in Long Beach, California, where our fellows rotate for their cardiology training. Uh, here at the University of California, Irvine Lab, we are a full-fledged interventional program, and uh, several of us are performing coronary interventions on a daily basis. Uh, the case we're going to discuss is that of a 53-year-old man of oriental descent who presented with uh, unstable angina on Saturday, two days before our current procedure. He had uh, chest discomfort of a fairly typical nature but did not want to come to the hospital right away. He then came two days later, which was this morning, with uh, chest discomfort, pressing, some shortness of breath. His EKG showed a, a sinus rhythm but had marked ST depression in the anterior leads. His only risk factor was that of a family history of his father having a stroke at the age of 50. We brought him to the cardiac cath lab. He was pre-treated with some heparin, aspirin, Plavix, and uh, was on our cath lab table. Our first set of angiograms showed the images behind me here of the LAD in the RAO cranial projection and the LAO cranial projection with a very severe left anterior descending proximal lesion of about 90 plus percent and a secondary lesion beyond that of about 65 to 80 percent in its mid-segment. You'll note how narrow this left anterior descending is beyond the tight stenosis and how tortuous it was. I'm going to get seated here. So let's go cranial, cranial. Russell, here's REO. Good. Here's LAO. There it is, tight LAD, caudal, caudal. So we're going to fix that. Okay, let's do a right. Big dominant right, huge. Okay, let's check. let's go up and do a pigtail. Okay, pigtail going up. Okay, LV gram. 13 for 45. Let's see if we can do it with less. Okay, this is just going to be a routine angioplasty stent delivery and an IVUS at the end, okay? Uh, we proceeded to perform intervention after the diagnostic images were obtained and we had difficulty crossing this lesion and subsequent difficulty in negotiating that tight turn. We we're ultimately able to perform coronary angioplasty with a two point five by fifteen millimeter balloon in several segments along the uh, LED in the proximal portion to prepare it for receiving a 2.75 by 23 Zion stent. Uh, we required a buddy wire with a platinum plus very stiff wire to negotiate these curves. Now I'd like to point out that the diagonal branch here before we stented is widely patent and after we stented uh, was pinched. I'm going to show you that in just a moment because the FFR is critical to our decision making of a jailed side branch which we did encounter on this particular case. Okay, wow, that was a bear. Now I think that second artery segment deserves something but I don't know if I can get a stent around there you know to treat that second segment. I'm going to take it around that and see how it feels, maybe dilate it and then come back and dilate the primary. I'll dilate distal first. That looks diseased though, doesn't it? Okay, let's dilate this first. I'm not liking it. Dilate this. What size balloon was this? 15. 15. Okay. 9, 10. That's tight. It was easy to do a pressure wire here. This would be a good case, but it's not easy to do a regular wire here, so I'm not going to challenge us too hard. We've got to treat that second segment. Okay, so we're going to try and get a balloon down there. Let's go around this corner. You like this balloon, That's okay with me. Inflate this. Went up here. We're going to have to stent this. We're going to have to stent proximal too, it looks like. So this was a hard artery to get around. Hard artery. We're going to get it. So this is a delivery catheter to deliver a second wire. So we're going back with the... Uh, Pilot wire. The Zions over the pilot, the Platinum Plus is a buddy wire next to it. Okay, let's take a cine before I get this thing out of the way. Just want to take a shot before I do anything. Oh yeah, so we pinched that diag a little bit. You know what? I'm not going after it. So, 
we pinch the diag a little. I'm going to FFR that diag, see if I need to do anything with it, okay? I'm going to finish delivering the second stent, and then we're going to see about FFR in that side branch. You have some, something else to show. 3015 Zions. Proximal LAD. Give me a shot here. Yeah, now that looks great, huh? Okay, I want to FFR the side branch first, then I'm going to finish with IVUS, all right? The image behind me now shows the post-stent uh, image of the diagonal branch, which now has been pinched, and the osteum went from 0% narrowed now to about 50 or even 60% narrowed. And angiographically, this is a very significant uh, question mark whether we need to work through this stent. Now, I'll just remind us that we put a proximal stent in, so we have a 3O by 15 millimeter Zions proximal, which overlapped with the 275 by 23 distal Zions stent. We had done high pressure inflations within these stents, and now we're ready to make a decision about the uh, side branch. So, our approach was to use the uh, Volcano. Uh, prime wire, which is a 14 thousandths angioplasty guide wire with its pressure sensor. So what we have is a jailed side branch after a difficult stent in a curved segment that's fairly firm and calcified. The diagonal was wide open before and it looks like it got pinched to about 50 or 60 percent diameter after the stent. And uh, I think it's worth opening that up if it's hemodynamically significant and I'll leave it alone if it's not. So our technique is very simple. We have the uh, installed uh, Volcano IVUS FFR system, the uh, S5. Russell's plugging the uh, FFR connector wire into the PIM. We're going to open up and zero everything. Pressure wire and the zero line are at the same height on the table. Okay, all zeroed up. Thank you. Pressure's back up on mine, and I'm going to check pressure on the wire. And there it is. Okay, we are ready to go. So let me go ahead and put the pressure wire in while you guys are getting the IV adenosine ready. Okay? And uh, it's going to go in next to my guide wire because if I want to dilate, I want to have access to the distal LED. And that was a hard place to get initially. We needed uh, a couple of different wires and we needed a buddy wire to get the stent down. And so. Hopefully we're going to do it. I just put a regular angioplasty bend on this wire as I do any. Nothing special. And we'll introduce it into the system. And before we cross, we'll normalize pressures with the aorta. Okay, so my pressure wire is going up to the end. It can be normalized almost anywhere near the end of the guide. So let's normalize. Are you normal? I've been normalized. PD normalized. Ready to measure. Okay, we are ready to go and put the wire across the gap. Now remember, we're going through different stents, and there we are, something like that. So we are on the other side of this stent. I'm going to cine this and squirt a little contrast just so everybody can see where we are. Okay, so this is going to be very useful. We then turn on intravenous adenosine, which is a mix at 140 micrograms per kilogram per minute. The infusion of this uh, uh, adenosine through the tubing directly into a large forearm vein. We ran this for two minutes and we use the monitor up here in the upper right uh, in front of you showing the signals of pressure in the distal coronary artery and in the guide catheter and the calculated numbers of the FFR. So the FFR says 0.96. You should hit measure now for me. Okay starting to fall a little bit. So we're running IV adenosine. We're coming up on minute number two. The lowest number we had was 0.86. And we're averaging now about 0.8887. There's some minor respiratory variations. Here's at 0.85. It hit 0.85 as the worst of it. Okay, at two minutes we'll just stop. Okay. I'm going to also do a pullback so we can see that there was no drift. So turn it off. Okay, so adenosine's off, and I'm going to pull the wire back while the hyperemia is still occurring to our proximal segment. And look at pressure, and now it's 
0.98. So no drift, accurate number. I'm very happy. Adenosine is going to wear off. Okay, and we're all done with FFR. And during our adenosine administration, the FFR values fell to the worst of 0 0.85, 0 0.86, which is a very non-ischemic value, such that we could comfortably leave that diagonal lesion without, that, without another complicated stent placement inside the uh, jail diagonal branch. We concluded the procedure by doing IVUS of the, of the stented segments, and indeed we found that we had underdeployed these stents relative to the vessel size. So can I have the IVUS catheter now? I want to IVUS my post stent result, please. So we're going to switch from the FFR into the IVUS mode and proceed. And I know that we used to struggle setting up all the machines for both the FFR and the IVUS and I don't think you're going to see any quicker setup than we have right now to go ahead and do that. So now we're just going to hook up the IVUS catheter. We're almost done. We've delivered, we had to put in two stents. They're not very long. And now we're just checking our work. Okay, we're going in with uh, the Volcano Eagle Eye. Okay, so I'm just going to walk the catheter down. I'm not going to struggle too hard because we got a pretty good result. And I'm worried more about the proximal than the distal part of this stent anyway. Yeah. So this stent is pushed in. It's a big artery. You can see how big that is. I'm going to start here and just pull back from here. Yeah. Okay. So here is uh, the mid-second stent. I'm going to pull back from here. 0.5 millimeters per second pullback. Go ahead and record, please. Thank you. So we're in the proximal stented segment now, and it looks to be one, two, three by three. We'll go back and measure this a little bit. Probably could go up a little bigger. And there's a lot of plaque. Look at how much plaque there is. This is proximal and small. We're going to have to go back and high pressure this with a 3.5, huh? Yeah, well, 3.5 at least. So the proximal part of this vessel has to get bigger. That's all there is to it. Let's go back, and we're going to hit the proximal part of this vessel again and then do one more IVUS run. That was a 3.0 stent, but it's not 3.0. Give me a 3.5.15 non-compliant balloon, please. Thank you. We returned with a 3.5 by 15 non-compliant high-pressure balloon, and we inflated these stents further, rechecked with IVUS again, uh, a procedure which is now very uh, easy to do in our lab because of our installed system, and we had a very excellent result. Oh, that's much bigger. It's much bigger. Okay, I'm done. Let's take this out. Let's take one more picture and call it a day. Good. Looks good. Everything's there. After having delivered our stents, checked the FFR of the jailed side branch, performed our IVUS, followed by high pressure inflation and re-IVUS, we were ready to take our final images. Behind me here is our final REO cranial projection, and you can see that we achieved a rather excellent result with what I'd consider 0% residual in the target segments, a small uh, diameter narrowing at the ostium of the diagonal jailed branch of no hemodynamic significance at this time, and a very a good result for our patient. At the end of the procedure, of course, he was comfortable and uh, was returned to the intensive care unit for our final monitoring.